So tonight, the uh, title of my message is The Master's Hand. Isn't God amazing? Yeah. Only God can create something out of nothing. Man can create something out of something God created. Everything that exists, God created, and God spoke it into existence. In Genesis 1.31, it says, God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. God created the expanse of the universe and creatures too small to see. The beauty and the wonder of his creation is incredible. We marvel at the glory of God. It is all a part of God's amazing plan. And I saw recently where someone hooked uh, some highly sensitive electronic equipment to a tree to a giant tree, and they recorded the sounds that came from that tree that sound like music. It was melodic. <laughs> so in Psalm 96, 11 through 13 says, let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea resound all and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let creation rejoice before the Lord. He is the master of his creation. <clears throat> but you know, God has given us the ability to create, but we can't do what God can. So to start with tonight, uh, let me tell you um, what I enjoy, enjoy doing the most. In fact, I lose all track of time when I'm doing it. I love taking raw materials and making something from them. It can be out of wood, metal, leather, cloth, plastic, or paint. I love molding and shaping materials into something that didn't exist before I made it. I'm sure you've all created in this way. It might have been a yummy food dish or a delicious dessert, or maybe an item of clothing, if you sew, or a piece of furniture, or structure if you're a carpenter. <clears throat> and I want to um, read a little story here from uh, Pastor, um, I think I need my spectacles. Yeah, that helps. Um, this is by Barry Edmondson. Uh, he said, um, and that's his title, is uh, uh, The Potter's Hand. And he says, the master potter knows how to make Take the mistakes of life and form them into something beautiful. And so he shares this story. In 1502, in Florence, Italy, there was a large block of marble given to a church in Santa Maria. The church immediately hired who they thought was a professional to sculpt this enormously huge piece of rock. The man was a professional but soon after commencing this great task, the man drilled a hole right in the bottom, destroying the magnificent piece of marble. So the church decided just to drape a huge sheet over it, not knowing what else to do. Since it had been damaged beyond recognition and repair, but a certain man named Michelangelo caught word of this large stone and how it had been destroyed. So out of curiosity, he went to check it out and thought, hey, I think I can do something here. After a time, he began work and sculpted, and what was once thought to be a, a lost cause became one of the greatest statues of the biblic biblical character of David ever built. He says, many people today feel like a gigantic, gigantic slab of marble perhaps battered and bruised, perhaps lacking substance, perhaps someone who has been discarded by certain people. But in the capable hands of the Lord God Almighty, 
we can be molding, molded into something beautiful. I thought that was really good. I am definitely not a master at using any element to create, but I enjoy doing it. Yes, I made many mistakes and must try to correct them, but that's how I learned to improve. God, on the other hand, doesn't make mistakes. His creations are perfect. That's why he is the master of creation. Guess what? He made you and I, and we are not mistakes. We, he created us for a purpose, just like everything else he created us for a purpose. He designed us in the womb to become the people we are to be used and accomplished for all he has planned for us to do. Yes, unlike God, we make mistakes, but God can still make something beautiful out of us. Um, if you think of this piece of marble that I read about um, as our lives, and we think of, think of ourselves as the professional who made a mess of the huge stone, we can see that we are ruined by our sins. We need the master to make something beautiful out of us for his glory. The master Michelangelo created one of the most famous works of art out of what most thought was worthless and damaged material. In Jeremiah 18, there's another story. It talks about the potter's hand, the potter and the clay. It says uh, in verses 1 through 4, This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you a message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. It was God telling Jeremiah that he was in control and that he was sovereign over the people of Judah. If you've ever watched someone at a potter's wheel and you look and see what they're doing, you wonder what they're going to create out of that lump of clay they just slapped down on the wheel. It starts spinning around and around. As the potter adds water and wraps his hands around it, then he skillfully starts to mold it and stretch it, push it, pull it, until it starts to form a recognizable shape. As the clay yields to the master's touch, you think it is going to be short and fat until the potter pulls it up and it becomes tall and thin. It may change many times until the potter is happy with, with the shape of the piece he is, has created. Just like, God molds, just like when God molds and shapes our lives, we wonder what in the world he's doing to me, but as we yield ourselves to him, we are created into something special and unique. Guess what comes next? The vessel is not finished until it's put in the furnace. <clears throat> Needs to go in the oven to be useful and that's when the beauty comes forth and the piece is now finished. God is still working on us until we are finished and perfect for his use. Isaiah 64, 8 says, Yet you, Lord, our Father, we are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. So as you see, I've set up a little display here. So I want to talk about that. Um, when I begin painting, I have a picture in my mind, and um, I have a somewhat of an idea of what I want it to look like when it's finished. <clears throat> um, I may change some aspects by the time I'm through, 
but I know where I want to go. It takes all these tools, the paints, the brushes, um, an easel, a canvas, water, um, palette knife, and a palette, all those things is what it's required, the tools that I use to create something. Um, and then when I begin painting, you take a blank canvas and you never know what's going to end up on that. But you have an idea of what you want to create. So you start and you do what's called uh, underpainting, which is just putting paint on the canvas in kind of a shape that you want to um, work from to create something. And when you're just starting on it, you wonder if you're ever going to make something out of it because it doesn't look like much. And, uh, but you, then you keep going and you add shade or shapes. Um, you try different brushes until you, uh, hour by hour, are moving ahead. And then you get to a point where you're like 95% finished, but you're still not satisfied. So it takes a few tweaks, a few strokes, and then all of a sudden you realize it's finished. And I know if I go any further, I'm gonna mess it up. <laughs> so that's when I know how to stop. <laughs> and I don't know if I'd mess it up, but I just feel like I would. <clears throat> But then I hope what I created is a blessing to others. And if it brings a smile to the face even for an instant, then it's worth all the effort. Just like this painting or a painting, God paints our lives using his hands as we become yield to him. He uses every aspect of our lives, his word, his word and even our mistakes he uses to mold us and shape us into his image through the Holy Spirit. Uh, the inspiration for this message came by way of a song that moves me. It was first a poem before it became a song. And you may be familiar with it. It's been around for a long time. It was written in 1921 by Myra Brooks Welch. The song version of it is sung by the Booth Brothers. And I wish I could play it for you. Um, but I decided I shouldn't do that, but I'm gonna try and sing it. <clears throat> so my voice is not very strong tonight, <clears throat> but we'll try it. Well, it was battered and scarred, and the auctioneer felt it was hardly worth his while to waste much time on the old violin, but he held it up with a smile. He said, it sure ain't much, but it's all we got left. I guess we ought to sell it too. Oh, now. Where are you going? Sorry. I touched my screen and I messed it up. Sell it to. Oh, now who'll start the bid on this old violin? Just one more and we'll be through. Then he cried, one, give me one dollar, who'll make it two? Only two dollars, who'll make it three? Three dollars twice, now that's a good price. Who's gonna bid for me? Raise up your hand, don't wait any longer. The auction's about to end. Who's got four, just one dollar more? to bid on this old violin. Well, the air was hot and the people stood around 
as the sun was setting low. And from the back of the crowd, a gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. He wiped the dust from the old violin and tightened up the strings. And then he played out a melody pure and sweet, sweeter than the angels sing. And then the music stopped and the auctioneer, with a voice that was quiet and low, he said, now what am I bid for this old violin? And he held it up with a bow. Then he cried out, one, give me one thousand, who'll make it two? Only two thousand, who'll make it three? Three thousand twice, you know that's a good price. Come on, who's going to bid for me? And the people cried out, what made the change? We don't understand. Then the auctioneer stopped, and he said with a smile, it was the touch of the master's hand. You know, there's many a man with his life out of tune battered and scarred with sin. And he's auctioned cheap to a thankless world, much like that old violin. But then the master comes, and the old foolish crowd, they never understand. <clears throat> mm -hmm. The worth of a soul and the change that is wrought just by one touch of the master's hand. And then he cried, one, give me one thousand, who'll make it two? Only two thousand, who'll make it three? Three thousand twice, you know that's a good price. Who, come on, who's going to bid for me? And the people cried out, what made the change? We don't understand. Then the auctioneer stopped, and he said with a smile, it was the touch of the master's hand. Yeah, that just you know, gets me every time I hear it, um, when I think about the words to that song. When God takes our broken, battered lives and he dusts us off and tunes us up, he makes our strings bend with his touch and creates something beautiful and amazing. The world can't understand why we yield our lives to God. But there's another song we all know. He touched me, and all the joy that filled my soul, he touched me and made me whole. There's nothing more beautiful than a life molded into God's own image. So, let's uh, close in a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for the fact that you saw us before we were ever created, Lord God. You had a vision for us, Lord Jesus. You had a plan for us. And you take us, Lord God, as we come to you, broken and, and dusted, dusty and out of tune and with all the failures and mistakes and the brokenness and the marred finish, Lord God, you take everything that you see, Lord Jesus, but you see a finished product, Lord God, that we can become something beautiful and perfect in your sight. And we just thank you, Lord God, for the life you change in each one of us, Lord God, how you created us and you saved us and you made us um, a part of your kingdom, Lord Jesus, that we can be a witness to you and give you glory 
and we can sing praises to you like the trees, Lord Jesus, as they um, sing music to you, Lord God, and all your glory. We just thank you for everything that um, tonight that you have given us, Lord Jesus, and as you guide us and the Holy Spirit leads us, Lord God, we pray that everything we do would be pleasing in your sight, Lord God, as you lead us step by step and day by day to follow you, Lord God, and to be a testimony to others. We just pray that you would go with each of us tonight, Lord God, and help us to really think about um, how you've made that change in us, Lord God, and that we owe you our lives, and it's our privilege and our desire to give you all the glory for everything we accomplish, Lord Jesus. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Thank you for your time.